Hi, Old Man Tech here. Today's project is to tap into the cold water side of my hot water heater and run a quarter inch line to my whole house humidifier which is attached to my furnace just around the corner behind me here. What we're going to use is this Watts reducing T. Half inch because this is half inch on the water heater. Half inch on both ends and then a reduction T down to a quarter of an inch. Of course first of all you want to shut off your main water which I did and then you shut off your valves to your water heater and then I opened the cold water line over here on the sink that I have to take the pressure out of it. Once that's all accomplished then you want to figure out how much you need to cut on this piece to uh, tie it back in. So what I did was I put this up against it and measured the outside, the ends of each end on the half inch side. And then you want to get a depth finder like this little Hummer here, put it into where you know the tubing is going to stop. In this case it's an inch and a quarter. So then from your previous marks that you put on here, you'll measure up and then measure down that inch and a quarter for the parts that go into this fitting. Now I'm probably not going to use this top one because I have to loosen the clamp here and I'm going to distort the end of that a little bit unless I cut this end off rather than cut it off here and still I just as soon have a new piece so I've got a new piece here that I'm just going to put a new piece in there the right length and then I'll be able to easily fasten it to here. So first step, like I say, is mark where your valve ends are and then measure back in how far you're going to have to cut off to get this length to come out to the same again. Once that's done, then of course I'm going to have to make a disconnect somewhere and I think I'm going to do it here at the top because it is flexible. I'm going to maintain this piece here after I cut it. So this piece here I'll be able to adjust up and, and down to compensate for getting the tubing in here and back in place. So we'll proceed with the cutting aspect of it right now. We're going to cut this upper PEX half inch PEX clamp which is this little booger right here. But we gotta be very careful when we cut through that that we don't get into the, the 90 degree fitting on here because it's brass. And if you make any nick at all in any of the ridges, you're, not, you're gonna have a leak right here. So we gotta be very careful that we protect this. So what I'm gonna use is a rotary tool again with a cutoff wheel. Now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna lightly start moving into that metal and as soon as we get to that blue we have to stop so we want to be very careful with it double check it so that we don't damage that when we take it off so here we go Yeah, make sure you have your safety glasses on. Okay, we got that cut, I think, uh, deep enough. Take you a good standard screwdriver. Reach into that groove you cut. Pry that open. As you can see, we're good. We didn't get into the end of the 90. And I'll take a pair of cutoffs, wire cutters, grab that. Watch your little fingers, because it's going to be hot. Yeah! Okay. We got that done. Now, while it's still sitting here, let's double check. While we're sitting here, we're going to go ahead and cut this, because we have a sturdy platform to cut it with. And since we're not going to use this piece again, 
we want to measure what that's going to be. So remember our second mark that goes into the fitting is down here, so we want to measure to that. So we'll mark up three and a half inches. So we're going to cut our new piece too. So got it zoomed in a little too much there. We'll go with that. Here's our piece we want to cut. Just put your little tubing cutter on there. Tighten her up so your cutting blade is right on the mark you just made. Spin that sucker around, tighten her up. Every time you come around, tighten her up a little bit more. Until you got it broke off. I always like to come in with a little chili and knife and clean some of that out of there just a little bit. Okay, now we got our new piece cut that's going in with the new tee. So we'll go ahead and trim this at our marks. You gotta have a good square cut for these Watts connectors. Now this is half inch, of course, if you had three quarter, then you'd get a three quarter T with a quarter inch out. You're gonna get a little water, a little water is expected. Works better if you turn the valves off. <laughs> okay. There we go. Now we wanna take this piece off. Sometimes that can be a booger. And it can be so much of a bugger that you may have to come in and be even ever so much careful to try and weaken it enough to take it off. Without getting into that 90. There we go. Okay, before we install this T with this piece that we cut from our other earlier measurements. These inserts come with the Watts connectors and you push them in well next actually not on this end with the ring but you push it into the part that goes into the valve. Push that into the valve till it stops on that mark that's your second mark you made. Then we're going to fasten it onto the water heater. Boom! Boom! And you bring this line over that you disconnected. Set your ring up. Take that back. This is why it's important to pay attention, which I don't do much of the time. You got to put that Got to put that insert in this piece too. There. Make sure you got them both in as far as they're going to go. Here's your valve. Or your T. Okay, now we got to tighten that clamp. Then have at her. Okay, now we're getting close to running our line, but uh, we want to check for leaks before we do that. So on this quarter inch end here, we're going to cut a little piece off of this quarter inch tubing. And we're going to install this on and off valve. Again, another Watts innovation. Stick one part of it into this 
valve there. The other part's going to go into here. Far as she'll go. And we're going to shut it off. This is a good time to check and see if you got any leaks. Make sure everything's sealed up. Pushed all the way in. Valve off. I'm going to turn the main house water on. If you hear that noise, don't forget to shut off the sink you turned on earlier to drain the water. <laughs> okay. Now, moment of truth. Turn on the cold water line. Full pressure. Ooh, I like that already. No leak. Turn this just a little bit. What we're going to do is we're going to run that quarter inch line up and over this uh, heat register over to the over to the furnace humidifier. Okay. Here we have it in place with the water pressure on. We've got no leaks. I pre-cut this uh, tubing here to go over. It's kind of hard to get back here. I'll see if I can show you what I'm working on. It's hooking the line up to this uh, whole house humidifier. I'll be taking this nut off right here and reusing it. Okay, on the other end of this tubing, which is going, going to go back to the uh, humidifier, I brought it up here so you can see it, what I'm doing, but you want to put that nut on first. And you put on this, uh, called a c compression fitting, quarter inch compression fitting. Put that over the tubing, and then we'll put that in the connector on the humidifier that you seen a moment ago and then you'll tighten this down. Okay, that's pretty much all there is to it. Got the valve in and brought her back. Routed a little bit along the ceiling there. And tightened her up right there with that compression fitting. So everything's on and ready to go. So that's how that's done. All right, that brings it close to another do-it-yourself video. Now some of these tools you may have, some you may not. Uh, you know, like this little uh, mini cutter, they're not too expensive. Now the price goes up a little bit for one of these PEX tools for clamping the clamps down, but my philosophy uh, way back to when I was a cabinet maker some 40 years ago is if you have the confidence to do the job yourself Go ahead and buy yourself some tools because chances are that you'll probably be needing them down the road somewhere else. If not, uh, most service calls for a plumber, for an example, will probably run you over what I've paid for these tools. So there's just uh, some food for thought there. Gain yourself some confidence, get a few tools, and save yourself some money. Old Man Tech out.